or some fundamental unit, the most fundamental useful unit, then you could derive the equation from the relationship of many of those fundamental units. Is that something that you're working on? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And so what do you have a sense for what that, that unit is for you? Well, I mean, so I wasn't trying to generate the unit. My, my goal was to back into it, right? But the, what I've backed into so far, and I'm pretty sure this part's right, what details are exactly wrong from here out, is that the fundamental unit looks like this. Is that a, <laughs> that's crazy. We were at Brian Keating's house, and Brian Keating had that thing on his table. What is that? We are at UCSD. We are at Dr. Brian Keating's office, and I think that we're going to talk about the history and the context of science the ideas that underpin the way that we come to conclusions about the world. And it seems like it might make sense to start with something that we've probably heard a lot about over the course of the last few years, which is this idea that we should believe in science. Table. What is that? This is a hyperbolic figure eight knot. We were actually at his office, not his house. Sorry, I imagine <laughs> that he—I imagine that he only exists inside of his office. We're not quite that good of friends yet. <laughs> All right, so well, let, let's back up a little bit. In geometry, there's this concept of manifold, right? It's a thing that can have boundaries without edges. Let's say, like a, a torus. We can take a, a you, you know, make a flat sheet of paper and wrap it together and tape one of its edges together, get rid of its edges, and then if it was stretchy, you could take the two circles and tape them together. And now it's a shape that has boundaries, right? It has a surface boundary, but it doesn't have edges. Hi, my name is Henry Sagerman. This is Figure 8 Not Compliment. Again, this is joint work with Saul Schleimer and Francois Goethe. So often in knot theory, it's a good idea uh, to look not only at uh, the knot, but also the complement of the knot. So the complement of the knot is what you get when you um, subtract the knot from three-dimensional space. Um, and you're left with a three-dimensional manifold that has uh, a torus boundary. Okay. Well, there are the simplest possible three-dimensional or three-manifold that you can have is called the Gieskin manifold. And imagine you, you, for, you formed a Gieskin manifold with some random wave interactions that just came together just right to form it. It's not until you double-walled it, double-covered it, that it would become stabilized and wouldn't just dissipate immediately after forming it. Okay, so in order to, to stabilize it, you'd have to double up on it. And when we double cover the Gieske manifold, we get exactly the hyperbolic figure eight knot. So I think the internal structure of hyperbolic space is the smallest possible knot you can make in hyperbolic geometry. So um, you can think of this as a, I got this sort of ball, and then I've drilled out uh, uh, the knot inside of this, where you can think of a, a worm eating its way through um, this, this uh, object uh, and leaving behind uh, the trail, um, which, is, which is the knot. Um, so one of the most interesting things about the figure eight knot complement is uh, that its complement uh, is actually a hyperbolic manifold. Um, it's one of the um, simplest examples of hyperbolic manifolds. And the external expression, that knot being formed means an, from the outside there's a cutoff region where nothing from the outside ever gets to go inside it. So the domain gets divided internally and externally. And the external expression of this internal cutoff in the hyperbolic figure eight knot is what I think is the inner hypersphere of maximal volume. So where did this come from? Uh, so this is closely related to the uh, symmetric figure eight knot. Um, so the symmetric figure eight knot, um, uh, as I said in that video, it was designed inside of uh, S3, the uh, unit sphere in four-dimensional space. And then we chose a, uh, uh, a projection point uh, in projecting it via stereographic projection to uh, three-dimensional space so we can print it. Interestingly, these things are opposites in volume. So the minimal possible volume complement you can have in hyperbolic space is the hyperbolic figure eight knot. And the maximal volume structure, volumetric structure you can have is the n hypersphere of maximal volume. <laughs>